for her is a dream come true. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. a message from Martha. It says, I'm very pleased to welcome you as candidates. I hope that you have a very good time competing, whatever the ultimate outcome. As your first order of business, oh, no. I would like you to divide yourselves into two teams of eight. Oh. Find something that each team has in common. The first task will begin tomorrow. Enjoy and let the game begin. Very, very good. We were all in the party mode. We wanted to settle in and really enjoy this beautiful loft. And all of a sudden, we we're back to business. Whoa. Man bearing fruit. And we, we want to hear more about Bethany's unique. I know. Yes. <laughs> went to school with his daughter. We lived in Paris together, his daughter and I. Oh, my gosh. And then I dated his son. Oh, oh my God. You dated his son, well, Charles' son. Is, yeah. anyone, is anyone threatened by that? No. Not at all. I don't care at all. The fact that Bethany knew Charles might be a disadvantage. Charles is going to go out of his way to make people know that he's not favoring Bethany in any way. Divide yourselves into two teams of eight. Find something that each team has in common. Like, yeah, for example, we have two people that are good at technology. We have a couple of lawyers, two chefs. We have a couple of chefs. We realized right away there were two distinct types of personalities, ones that had very creative types of occupations, chefs and artists and entertainment, while there were others who were more self-starters, entrepreneurs, and had a strong business sense. So those two qualities resonated very quickly. I like the corporate creative idea. Let's just see where we go if, if we do corporate That's creative. Corporate versus creative. Yeah. Can we just have the corporate people move over here and the creative people move yeah. over here? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Let's, let's do this. Okay. Split up. Corporate over here. I like it. We're done. I say we kick some creative ass. Come on. New York. I think my team is fine. I think there are some people who will either surprise us and be incredibly resourceful or are going to be people who need to be sort of babysat. I'm trying to think of something that's just very cool. Yeah. Something very Martha. I do. Something Martha, too. The next thing we had to do was we had to come up with a name for our team. And so we wanted to capture the idea of a creative spark. You're, all right, I, I thought Team Go. That's what I thought. I know you wouldn't like it. Flair. Like the single Flair. word. We all are creative. Flair? I like that one. Oh, Flair is so frilly. I had some concerns with Jim. Flair makes me feel like a limp wrist and sissy boy. He just wouldn't stop cracking jokes, saying things. If he comes across tomorrow like he came across today, I don't think it is OK. I can't hear my brain over your voice. I asked right you now. your opinion two seconds ago, and you said you didn't you wanted to I, cash I out. I need to think. I need you to go ahead think. and think. I've always had a problem with people who want to control my actions. <laughs> you don't control my actions. I control your actions. Get it right. How is, is anybody like the mamas and the papas? Because that's one that I've had in my head for years, and I don't know why. <laughs> Just kidding. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Who's this? Marcella. Oh, hi, Marcella. It's Martha. Oh, good morning, Martha. How are you? Fine. As soon as I'm finished here working from home, I'm going to head over to Random House to do some business. And I'm going to come down to the lobby, and I'll meet you there to give you your first task. Be ready to leave at 8 AM, and don't be late. Thank you very much. See you later. Goodbye. Bye. What makes a children's book a success? It's really the marriage between words and pictures and a new way of looking at the world. Well, you have to encourage human beings at an early age to read and learn. Absolutely. And, and no audience is harder than children. Definitely. Uh, I think we should get to work. Let's go. Morning. How'd you like the loft? Fantastic. Well, I see that you have broken up into two teams. 
Yes. So who's the project manager of this I am team? the project manager. Ah, Jeff. Great. And did you find a common theme amongst yourselves? Well, we all self-selected as creatives. Our name is Matchstick, and we're the start of something big. I really like that name. I can see the logo right now, a brightly burning match. And uh, project manager for this group? I'm the project manager. Ah, Donna. Great. Our goal is always to be first and to be the best, and our name is Primarius. Matchstick and Primarius. OK, well, today we're in the lobby of one of the most beautiful buildings in New York. This is Random House. Chip Gibson uh, has been my friend and my publishing mentor, and it has been a fabulous relationship. And Schwartz is a fantastic editor of children's illustrated books. They will be your sort of bosses on this particular task. And your task today is exciting as can be. You're going to adapt an established, well-known fairy tale, making it pertinent to today's children. It really is business lesson number one for me, is connecting with your audience. Not only with children, but also with parents, right, Chip? Oh, yeah. Alexis and I, we, we still read children's books, and, uh, and I'm waiting for grandchildren, of course, but um, <laughs> that's beside the point. Um, so that is what your task is going to be. So after you've chosen your fairy tale, you'll have access to a designer and to an illustrator. At the end of the task, you will have a bound children's book, and then you're going to read your book to a group of first graders. Oh. And then uh, both Chip and Anne will tell me which book is the winner of this particular task. And then the winning team will be celebrated, of course, and the losing team will be called into our conference room, and one of you will be asked to go home. Time to get to work. <laughs> oh! That's going to be very fun. Be great. So enthusiastic. I think it's very important for any business executive to know the importance of connecting with the customer. Whether that customer is a reader, a television viewer, a consumer of retail products. Isn't that great? More now, people would buy that, right? Well, everybody would buy it. That's great, too. <laughs> Making a connection with the customer is essential to the success of a business. OK, 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 OK. We need to know what book we have in mind to adapt before we go meet with an illustrator. I think that the clear choice for us is Jack and the Beanstalk because good with Harry element. Potter, no, all kids are into magic. I think that's what's going to sell. I think that's totally. smart. Yeah. I agree with you. There's, you know, all kinds of spins you can put on the story. The giant doesn't have to die. What about if we do it underwater? That is great. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Okay, hold on. Like little, you guys are going to have four people. The project manager is speaking. I looked at our team as being the group that does have the corporate experience that I thought the group would be very professional. And instead, everybody was screaming out ideas, and I had to figure out a way to get the group under control. We need to take control of this meeting. I didn't think any of us would be this frantic. So let's split up into two groups. One is going to actually go recruit some people that are on the street with kids and bring them in here. While they're gone, the three of us will be finishing this book for them. And to me right now, the most important thing is that those kids love our book when we read it to them. The idea that I'm proposing is Hansel and Gretel in an urban setting. It's all about running away, and the city is a scary place to run away. OK, I love Hansel and Gretel. That's true. As for the writing of the story, I think you would be great. Dawn, you've got to be the writer. I come from a writing literature and publishing background, so immediately the team looked at me as a potential writer for this. I'm just going to ask nicely that everyone please try to respect a little bit of personal space. Maybe don't interrupt Whispers. me or try to be Whispers. quiet while I'm in the corner. Honestly, it was a shock when Dawn was like, okay, I just need to have quiet. I'm not really familiar with working with a person who, in a giant group situation, needs absolute quiet in order to operate. Love to do city things Love like city. take rides on their bikes. Uh, uh, you know what? I would say that Can we make a copy of this? Yeah. Yeah. So you guys, yeah. look up the, look up the We're done. So we're done. It's a jacket. If it's Hansel and Brett, if it's Hansel and Brett, Dawn didn't like the noise. She didn't like chaos. She really can't do the work with a room full of screaming people. The real world is, this is when I have to do the work. My option is to marginalize her completely. I have a very difficult time with the way things are going right you, now. Here's what I can tell you. I can sit here with my face to the window and my back to the room and write. I'll continue drafting this, and then you can periodically just read it over my shoulder and say, that doesn't work. OK. Question? 
We are testing a children's book for Random House Publishing. Do you want to do it? It's up to you guys if you want to do it. Yeah! We tried to take the advice that Martha had given us. She wanted us to connect with our target audience. So we recruited children to come in and hear the draft of our story. 